Anarchist ideals seem quaint and unworkable to most modern thinkers. It is difficult to separate the fact of the movement's violence from its aspirations. That anarchism in the United States influenced some of the free love movement, as well as the birth control movement and the woman's suffrage cause. It helped spread the revolutions in Spain and other oppressed nations. It influenced many art and literary movements, such as Dada and anti-establishment art group. Anarchism also helped to give rise to the international situationists. Here's a quotation from that group. People who talk about revolution and craft struggle without referring explicitly to everyday life, without understanding what is subversive about love and what is positive in the refusal of constraints, such people have a corpse in their mouths. Some of the anarchist charges against the mainstream were true. Government and religion often work in tandem and place unreasonable constraints on people. Religion is one of the largest and most difficult to eradicate oppressors of the modern world. Its advocates would like to lead us back, back to the time when people were under the church's sway and lived in fear of the past, the present, and the future. Let us move past them with their dead faith, dead verities, and antiquicate, antiquicated notions. We, even though we are likely to reject the anarchist political ideals, may be inspired by their courage to imitate both their affirmation of their atheism and their intransigence when they fought for their convictions. The future beckons to our secular community. We have only to walk forward, unafraid, to meet it. Thank you for your attention. Looking forward to our discussion. Thank you very much. Man, you are an elegant writer, I'll tell you. When you wrote Thank this, you. I just. Thank you, Greg. Very, uh, I enjoy it. Uh, one thing I have to ask before anything else is. Did Henry Ford really raise wages to avoid a strike? Because that doesn't sound like Henry Ford. I think he must well, have. Well, he did. I well, he, he raised wages, yeah. and he raised it quite a bit. But I don't think it was really to avoid a strike. Well, that's a good question. But Apparently, maybe more, indirectly, more. but not directly. Some experts think that he did. Indirectly, but, you know, you I'm know, not an expert. But not, and, but not in response to an immediate threat. Yeah, I, there because was there were a lot plenty of threat of, of the time, but there was a lot of threat of the time. Yeah, but Mary, there were plenty of strikes against the Ford plants. Well, I'm quoting and, experts, so I can't. Well, I'm not an expert in this yeah, era. No, you know? it was, was self-interest. It was in light, maybe in light self-interest. Well, yes. He knew that uh, these people couldn't afford to buy his car. Yeah, he wanted them to buy the car. And as a condition of uh, getting the uh, the high wage that you had to have an inspector come to your house to see your manner of living. They didn't want you to be living in sin. They didn't want, you know, drunkenness or whatever else. Somebody would come to your house now and inspect your I house before that. you would get the wage. Wow. So, yeah, it is commonly, I, I was taught that in school too, and believe me, I'm no fan of unions, but uh, it, it was taught in school, oh yeah, Ford was ahead of his time because he paid, you know, much more than anybody else for the work. Well, that but, I had learned in school. But it was yeah. all to manipulate the workers into conformity, much like what the anarchists would say, that, that he was trying to buy their allegiance. Wow. And that there was these conditions. And that their you behavior. Couldn't, you couldn't live with a woman unless you were married. <clears throat> wow. And then the supervisors at the plant, they would, they would find a man's wife and then say, I'm going to have sex with your wife. And you want your job, you're gonna, you're just gonna let me have sex with your wife. And that this would happen? No, I can't prove that, but yeah. that that's that wow. was the level. That wouldn't of surprise fear. me. Again, the openings. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to jail. You know, <laughs> so that was a level of fear that they could put into people during the depression. This was maybe this was a little later. Yeah, this was later. Then mm -hmm. what? But but you know the the shooting that happened in. Uh, Dearborn, when they tried to, to line up for jobs there at the plant. Oh, I remember that. And the maybe. thugs beat them up and then shot yeah. them in the stomach. There were there were a lot of well, there was a lot of violence during that period. Yeah, this is a very violent period of time. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? Uh, the playwright. Oh, what's his name now? Odets, I believe. Waiting for Lefty. It, yeah. it shows that yeah. kind of thing. There were there were, uh, there were a lot of left wing writers, and it was great. There was a lot of really good work. And the Sacco and Vincetti case, and Sacco, by the way, might have been guilty. It's it's really unclear, but Vanzetti pretty sure wasn't. But they threw a man off a building. Well, he fell. They said while well, he was in police custody, but nobody or the believed police, that. Maybe the police threw him off. Yeah, the 
Yeah, I, it's, uh, it seems. Maybe he it. jumped to make the police look bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah. He jumped so the police. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah there were really bad. There were bad things going on there. It was an enormous strike breaking, and you know, but I mean, they were scared too. I mean, uh, a bomb had gone. I can't remember the name of the judge, but it, it had killed him, and nearly killed his wife. I mean, they had left a bomb, like you know, they had it delivered to his house. They had a, a lot of bombs that they had lined up. Jim and I watched a great movie. I can't remember the title of it. You remember mm -hmm. that? Yeah, yeah, which was showing what was going on, mm -hmm. and, and how you know how the workers had a point, and how the establishment had a point. It was a well done film documentary. Uh, no, it was fiction, but it was like a doc, docu, <laughs> docu fiction, docu enter, enter, thing, whatever. Yeah, something like that. Has anyone made a movie of Golden Slime? Because it's you know, you know, I don't know. You know, we saw a great movie once in Canada on uh, Rosa Luxemburg. Mm -hmm. and what was she, the name of that? Can't remember that. I can't remember the she name. She was of a contemporary of Golden. Well, she was yeah. just a little bit earlier, but they they didn't really associate. You know. Because she was a social. social. Yeah. yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Back to the beginning of the lecture, mm -hmm. um, you had a quote that I'm still scratching my head over, but I kind of want to know who said it. I missed that part. It was the quote was the right to be whatever you have the strength to be. Oh my gosh, that was uh, the Max uh, Steiner. <laughs> Spell that. Uh, S T I R N E R. S T I R N E R. And his first name is Max. Yeah, I wrote that one down too. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm not sure if I like it or oh my don't gosh. like it, or but Luke, it's. It came up on the web sometime, and and he was just so, I mean, absolutely. He's a bit like <clears throat> Ayn Rand. I suspect that she might have picked up some of her ideas. Oh, from interesting. Him. I did. Norm, did you ever hear her cite him as an influence? I suspect he was. Was he rushed? <clears throat> Uh, yeah. Well, actually, he was German. German. He was German. I would think that, you know, he was well known throughout Europe, and, and you know, Rand, Rand was very well educated. I would suspect that she was. Well, one of one of, of Rand's phrases that she hates that I did hear you mention was, uh, "From each according to his ability, to each yeah. according to their need." But that's the that communist. wasn't her. That she was the hated communist. That that's the communist. Yeah. Right. Yeah, she hated that. Yeah. yeah. Well, remember, she, her family, like, lost everything they had during that revolution. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'll tell you, I, I, I had put down quite a few little quotes that you strung through, of course, like the one you just mentioned. They're fun, aren't they? The lecture, by the way, is up on the already on the web. So if you want to just go through it and pick up some quotes, if you like to put them mm -hmm. down. But I mean, I see a lot of good stuff came out of the these kind of movements. Right. But there's a lot of paradigms in there that maybe I'm mistakenly embracing in my own life that it caused me to be disturbed by a lot of what this anarchy concept I was well, having I think all of going on. I think I, first of all they're very naive. I mean they feel that government and church and state and blah 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 has corrupted people and it's rather than people have corrupted those corrupted institutions. The and they think, you know, basically what they, most of them feel, I don't want to speak for all of them because as I met, I've said several times, it's a loose group, but they feel that if you eliminate these things, people's great mm -hmm. human nature will come out and everything will be wonderful. So people's people great wise. human nature will just create another set of government or rules Well, they don't feel structure. that way. They feel if you can really root it out and just listen to the people and merge them like those They can feel whatever they want, they want but time, history has shown time and time again yes. that I, every I time you have a revolution for I agree. you have Thank instantly you. a new substituted... That's correct. There was an interesting New group that they had yet realized. History certainly shows Oh my that. gosh, how well, then they didn't study history. Before the Russian Revolution, really. Well, they studied what they, history, though. What they did they know? They, they saw the American Revolution, and that was successful. The French Revolution wasn't... Well, really successful by whose metric? Yeah. By, yeah, by whose yeah. metric, of course. But, but if you were... You know, we're trying to judge them by our contemporary Right, standards. we're being very anachronistic. Yeah. And it's... Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's to, the right word. We're, or we're, what's the word? We're not you're being fair to Trying that. to apply modern modern thought to thought. Isn't that anachronism? Yeah. Isn't that I, I, anachronism? I think it's kind of, well, not really. No, I'm uh, trying to think what it really is. But it's kind of anachronistic. And anachronistic thinking, okay? Where you're yeah, trying to apply yeah. our today's yeah. values and morals yeah. on yesterday's actions. Yeah. 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 So, but a better example would have been the civil American Civil War. They said violence solved slavery. 
right? Violence got rid of slavery. So they maybe they thought that that was the way of the world. That it had well, I mean, yeah, know, but that were, was also the South was also rebelling against government. Yeah, and look what they were yeah. trying to protect. So I, I'm not, they were trying to protect a different form of. Sometimes I'm sorry that they weren't successful and we could just be done with them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have so I the same the Bible Belt. I mean, I think we're all having a little bit of conflict. With well, yeah, I mean, they were idiots. The anarchists are Well, I hope I didn't pre never present tested. them as like it was well, like a good thing. I was just it, trying to be objective about this yeah. whole thing. I mean, and not be unfair. You, every time not you mention it, you'd say an anarchy theory. Which raised in my mind, does anarchy or has it ever worked in practice anywhere? Because you can I'm have not. a theory, but then you're going to test it, and it's, it's never been tested. It's never or worked succeeded. anywhere that I've Well, and we right. need radical thought in order to push against. Yeah. Right. I mean, you do need some form of that, but I think what I'm most repulsed about, I mean, the woman was an accessory to attempted murder. Well, yeah. And, and yeah. you know, it's like. Well, well, you know, well, remember, ass. remember, they were, you know, they were young and silly. I mean, when they got that she's still, <laughs> she's yeah. still an accomplice to attempted murder. Well, I mean, I'm not approving her act. I, I'm right. trying to take the whole life. The and history. I guess all I'm saying is, I, I yeah. the radicalism and thought, like when you spoke last time. Yeah. I mean, there was a lot of radical Ingersoll, yeah. you know, his yeah. thought could be considered. Yeah, but, but he was a violent. Ingersoll was very much part of the upper bourgeoisie. Of course. And, yeah. and I get yeah. some of that, but I mean, it my point is, is that there was no violence, and soon as, and even these people, as soon as you bring violence into, well, we talked about the women's right temperance, and yeah. I brought up the point that as soon as the women started engaging in yeah. violence, they had a great deal yeah. of pushback. Yeah. So, I don't know, the ideals may be great, but the well, minute I was, we toss violence into I hope it, that nobody thought I was advocating their idea. I, I wasn't was sure. Be, oh, I was You're trying to be very objective. Yeah. You are an anarchist. No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. I, I, wasn't I think totally it's sure. extremely naive. I want to okay. string together a couple of quotes that you put out there because because my sense is that, and I think it's already been expressed, that the utopia fails to acknowledge human nature. Yes. There was some concept, yeah. maybe I missed it, that equality was implied somehow, that if we all yeah. had. So a sure. few of the quotes that, that came out there, which was, no judge but myself, you can. Be whatever you have strength well, to be. Well, that's senior. Yeah, he he stood out though among right. them. Most of them were but not. There. String that to. Um, the masses are inert and sluggish. <laughs> My position that most people are and must be followers. Yeah, they must and, be. I mean, you have to. And 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 there was a a, a a phrase of, when the masses become fully conscious. <laughs> now yeah. I'm gonna. I know it might just be. <laughs> Was it anachronism? My time, as I look out there and say, not even partially conscious, I would no, say yeah. unconscious, mostly. Well, see, these, these you, people you, were so idealistic, they wanted to yeah. raise these people up to some level. I mean, Marx actually had some idea that, you know, that if the worker had free time, that, you know, he would cultivate... You know, genuine library hobbies, books and library books. Well, he was a right. good music. Can. Well, he really yeah. wasn't because you know what do they do? They watch television. They play stupid oh. games. I thought you were just implying they, drink that they would beer. have free time. But, but yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, what these people were hoping and what really happened. I mean, you can see here in the United States and and in Europe. I think some of the results of leisure time for the workers. And I'm not putting down leisure time for the workers. I mean, right. come on. But you see it. But My I husband and I mean, come on, it's pathetic. And you put that. What, what, I'm sorry, was, uh, but when I let me interrupt just one minute. When I feel, okay. when I think of the people that died, fought in World War II, and died against fascism, and suffered, I mean horribly. And if they could come back and see the waste that we are making of their efforts, I would. I would That's a bit extreme. I'm serious. I feel that all the time. Like you know, like I feel like we betrayed that entire generation. I really do. The fascists. Fascism? Well, we, I feel why? that we betrayed those who why? fought against freedom. Why? We have freedom. Yeah. Why? Oh, we have freedom. freedom. I, don't, I don't understand. Well, what kind of, what would, how are we using the freedom? I mean, I'm not against freedom, but, you that's know. That's another question, besides. Well, I think it's pathetic. Well, I think that's it's another, pathetic. You're making that's a another question. highly idealized. Yes, it is. Perspective, it because is. We're, we're saying that they went off to war assuming that we would use our gift of freedom in a way that they would approve, yeah. versus they went off to war 
to make sure that we had the opportunity to use our gift of freedom as we may see fit. I agree, but I want to like puke a lot of times when I see. I think we all every generation wants to. But you were getting stringed with those. That Greg. Yeah, I'm sorry, Greg. I interrupted you because I wanted to go into a diatribe. The strength to be. Most people are followers. The masses are inert and sluggish. They sure are. Masses are fully conscious. What was a. You know, the Tao Te Ching again, Lao Tzu had said to rule the people, keep oh, their bellies okay. full and their minds empty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and so when, when I look at this whole concept of, of being whoever you can have the strength oh, that's to silly. be, and most people don't have the strength to be, like if they weren't led, they would wander into the sea and drown. I yeah. mean, that's how <laughs> they would just, just mindlessly walk into the water. So what this movement is for is with people. It's almost like an elitist intellectual movement. That's like, the trouble with most of It just right. can't work for the average right. guy who mm -hmm. just says, Trump good. Be and followed. did any of these you know, people I mean, have children? Because well, some of them did, yeah. But I mean, they, but they couldn't have been good parents. <laughs> I mean, you can't possibly and believe all this stuff and be a good parent because at some point you have to have some structure, some government, well, some course. school, some this, but some remember, that. Remember, this was a, this was a high, highly idealistic you know, political movement that was atheist and I, I thought it was important that we know something. Oh, I'm not, I, this is yeah. fascinating because yeah. I've never yeah. dug yeah. this I into it. I was fascinating as yeah. I dug into it. So in their defense, though, they, they weren't saying that you don't organize amongst yourselves. No. But that it's a free, it's a, like if you wanted a school, yeah. you know, you would meet with other parents and say, that's of like mind and yeah. so it's not do it voluntarily. This, yeah, yeah, it's not to say there'd be no organization. Yeah, it was, yeah, they wanted like, everybody to cooperate, which yeah. is a joke. I mean, right. <laughs> and we all know that. Yeah, yeah, but it exactly. wouldn't be a top down. It would no. be peer to peer, as yeah. what we call it. It's like some of the people are trying now with these, uh, what did they call those communities? Homeschooling. The homeschooling, but what are some of the communities? <laughs> The intentional communities. Intentional communities. But in some sense, the, our entire education system was from the bottom up to begin with. I mean, it was a reform movement to get, uh, you know, K through 12 education. Yeah, but to you get know, kids the school system. In the schools and not in the factories. But we bring, we bring up, we bring up, the government folks, had to get involved. But I'm just saying how it started. And I'm not yeah. criticizing this, but we bring people up to be good citizens. You yeah. know, we don't bring them up to be real thinkers. <laughs> well, you can be both. That some people being... emerge from that herd again that Greg's talking about to become thinkers and to, you know, make these breakthroughs. And to be persecuted as intellectuals. Well, not when always. they have great vision, yeah. like say building a space shuttle, everyone yeah, else right? has to follow yeah. that vision. You can't all say, yeah. I think there should be three wings. Well, I think yeah. there should be two. Yeah. Yeah. So you I'm going to build two. You build three. No, anarchism is never completely, flies. you know, naive. So, yeah. You, you said something that, and I know you didn't go there, and I, and I know why you didn't go there, but when you mentioned Christian <coughs> anarchists, I thought, well, that's pretty damn interesting, so I promptly oh, went, looked okay. at a few things on that. Okay. And because I was like, how could it? Because you had already made the point that you know, God is the right. Family. So I mean, yeah. religion in itself is a right. Yeah. So we know all that. But I was like, so how could how could that be? And so I went in and looked at it, and um, it was really interesting. I mean, tell us a little bit. Well, they had mentioned uh, the part, and you have to forgive my, my books of the Bible, but what's the part where um, they begged for a king? Saul was the oh, king. Oh, yeah, the, the Jews. Yeah, and they were pointing at, you know, they wanted a king like everybody else had, and before that there was no government, <laughs> yeah. there was no structure, and so a lot of these Christian anarchists exactly. point to that as the, f the fundamental break. I mean, the original, or, I'm sorry, the original oh, religion okay. was government free. It was in that moment when they called in and asked for a king that it messed everything up. And then the other thing that I found, I guess I need to go back and learn more about Tolstoy. I mean, the damn shit. Oh my so God, long. Tolstoy was, yes. But apparently his tech, his book, The Kingdom of God is Within You, yeah. is like the key text for Christian anarchists. You know, that would not surprise me. I mean, he was a real nut. I mean, about <laughs> I didn't realize how quite religious he, he was. He was a great her. writer. I mean, you know, War and Peace, and, right, right. and Anna Karenina, if you haven't read them, read them. I read them about three times over each book, but he is really, by the time he gets to the, the, the Kreutzer Sonata, he is boop, going boop. cuckoo. Yeah. Right. So. But I mean, yeah, the whole and I guess there are still Christian anarchists 
there is well, still there's, movements well, there's today. Well, a lot of Christian Marxists, too, a lot of Christian socialists, especially in, in and communists, and especially in Italy, places like Italy, they don't see any real contradiction. No, I just thought that was an interesting... Yeah, it is interesting. Go, it was just interesting. It is interesting. I also would have to ask the question, and, I, and maybe I should let you speak first, but so would we consider Occupy Wall Street a modern-day anarchist movement? Yeah, I would say, it, yes, a okay. great deal like it, yeah. yeah. So you see, it does pop up, and then it's crushed or dissipates. Well, well I kind of agreed with Occupy Wall Street, well, see, so what's what wrong I mean. with me? See, we kind of agree with them, and we just don't like, you know, some of the... But it, it didn't have to be crushed. I mean, no, some it, of fell, the, it fell apart. the more mainstream ideas actually took yeah. hold, where you have uh, minimum wages going up, mm -hmm. and uh, reform of the financial institutions, the regulations. But they also, they fought amongst themselves a lot, just yeah. like any other group. And that's why it's, it's hard to understand how Goldman could not be disillusioned with anarchy by the end of her life. Right. Because well, a they lot were of fighting amongst themselves. A lot of communists could not. I mean, they, some of them actually had to go to Russia and see what was going well, on. Well, she, she was, yeah, like yeah. you said, yeah. she was yeah. completely disappointed. Yeah, they were completely, that, that, I thought that's a very what, important they were against, These people were against the Bolsheviks from, you know, right, right from the get-go, mm -hmm. actually. Well, and... Um, what a Ryan, I can never, Ayn Rand, Rand, her, Ayn, Ayn Rand, I was, but she was, lived through it, and so she came out hating it, but, she but became a this woman capitalist. was already over here before it happened, yeah. so she had an idealized, yeah, but, Goldman but had an idealized, a lot of people, and then got we there, talked to she met one guy lying. that, that uh, he, he was uh, visiting us with his girlfriend, and she knew some, like, really dedicated American citizens that were communists, and they, went over there, and when the wife saw that stuff, she had a nervous breakdown, like, you know, on several, within a month on the spot. They had to bring her back, like, on a stretcher. It just completely States. shattered her delusions. Yeah, she got better, but I mean, you know, but yeah, I mean, she just went to pieces. That's what happens when you shatter someone's Well, heart. when you shatter someone's right. beliefs, a belief system is sometimes yeah. more important than reality until you see reality. I Rand wanted a very limited government, too. Though. Yeah, she, she did, but as a cabinet. But as a, as a response, to the communist thing, well, whereas Goldman was thinking that, that the communist thing was the response, the the anarchist response. Yeah. And well, and the Shrug is a is a is a idealistic book. It's a utopian thing. Mm -hmm. By by the time that her yeah, what's what's her name and then the, what's the Dagny or Dagny Tiger? Dagny Tiger. Is it Dagny? Okay, Dagny. Okay. By the time she gets to that society that Francisco and the other guys have formed. And Reardon, and all of a sudden, these capitalists are like, oh, yeah, well, I don't bid you on that, but let's have a good time, you know, and then I'll take care of you on that. And I'm going, yeah, come on now, you know, capitalism was never like that. Never. You know, she had some ideal picture. And it was doggy -eat dog. I was like, kill or be killed, it was eat or be eaten. And I mean, you know, they were so silly by the time you got to that part in the book. Uh, the otherwise, it was a pretty damn good book. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, love it. Was. I love Ayn Rand. I, I don't like her ideas. I really hate her ideas, but I, I love her, her writing. I love her writing. Really? I love her writing. I know her I did not like her writing. I mean, no. She's a terrible writer. Oh, oh I think said, she's horrible. I said, I am an English major with a lot of training. I've read some of the world's greatest writers. Well, you're better than me. I don't sure. think she's like Proust. I don't oh. think that she's, yeah, you know, she's like Tolstoy or Dostoevsky, but she's a damn entertaining, good writer. She, the only one I thought I should be able to write a book like the only should, one you I should, agree you should with try to say that those story. are not good books, and go to the go to the uh, sales records and see. Now that's not fair. I read them. A lot of things are junk. I just sell didn't well. think they were that good. Oh, I think she's quite. Oh, I think she's terrific. Her We the Living writer. is she really good. Yeah. Wow. How about how about uh, what's the name of the one the we or I or what what's the name of that? That's what anthem. I was trying to think. Anthem. anthem. Now anthem. that one I like. Anthem. Oh my God, that's that, right. that one I like. Well, you yeah. know what? I think she did that's, better that with short scary. stories because this, when she well, more she got is, into it, her writing fell apart. It's a novella. It's very short. Anthem is I great. Like we the Living, I think, is a great. That was a good one too. Of, of mm -hmm. you know Russia, yes. you know, and well, there was and one like, scene in, in I thought it was that shrug where there sitting around in a boardroom, a corporation, and they're saying, well, we're putting $50 million or something into this train in, what, out of uh, Mexico or something, and, you know, they'll probably just take it from us, and we have like a that responsibility to serve mankind, and if we... Right. And I was like, I've been in boardrooms. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know. It was, yeah. it was like, there's no way you yeah. could ever say, well, it's right to do it this way. 
Yeah. I thought her you character was yeah, really yeah, 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 very flat. Yeah. yeah. The characters aren't really well drawn. Yeah, they're kind of like kind of um, you know, they're kind of like um, caricatures of characters. Yeah, well they're they're kind of like carrying her her philosophy. I think she's I think she's yeah. an very underrated writer. Very I really do. I think the Bible's an interesting book too. <laughs> I wouldn't Thank call you. it well written. Well, you know, I actually think about how many of our great writers were exposed. Shakespeare, Melville. Influenced by the Bible. I mean, they were in, there's wonderful prose in the Bible. I mean, oh, the we King all James laugh version. at it. But we laugh yeah. at it, but you know what? I mean, they picked up a lot of ideas and a lot of great phrases. I mean, you can't. Okay, back to our topic here. <laughs> okay. um, you, you mentioned looking backward, which I think I read that in high school. You know, I've never read it. Well, oh yeah, I wrote that is, one in town too. Bellamy, you said he was a socialist, but yeah, but um, was, was he writing that book to be um, more of a suggesting of what the future could be, or you, you mentioned that it was a criticism of the industrial yeah, revolution? Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, I believe it was. He wrote a second book apparently, which uh, laid out some of his ideas. Because so he was very much a socialist, was a utopian, and he was definitely yeah. a utopian. The, and you know, those two were getting it on. Who? Bellamy and... Goldman? Never. No, 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 who, no. I, who was the other one? Oh. Oh, you're thinking of Berman. That, thank you. Berman. Berman. Yeah, Alexander Berman. Okay, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Our sexy little devil. <laughs> <laughs> she was... But... Ugly. Not really, you know, she had a Stop certain... Stop with your... She certain, you sound like Trump. shaming. You sound like Trump. <laughs> <laughs> she um, had a certain je ne sais quoi, you know. It, it was clearly her intelligence shined through. And I think her ready. personality, too, you know. Uh, but anyway, I don't, I don't think looking backward was openly hostile towards the Industrial Revolution, as I remember it. It was, it was trying to propose like this new yeah, future. Yeah, new order, yeah. A new order. And it was very attractive to me as a teenager See? because it was a planned society. I didn't realize, you know, that that has a lot of negative consequences. Oh, sure does, right? Because like Ayn Rand, he wrote with this, this freedom of fiction where you could just create your human nature. And well, yeah, you create you your own to world. When adhere to human life. nature. You just create it and say... Yeah. Well, wouldn't it be great to have a planned economy in the future and everybody yeah. will be happy because everybody will have purpose and uh, mission and be wanted and educated? Well, you know, let's remember, these people didn't really understand, you know, what people were really like. They, they, did, they didn't yet. And Freud was just coming on the scene. You know, the World War I had not quite begun when the, some of the worst of this went on. And World War I was devastating. To yeah. so many people. That's a good point. And and those governments, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the book. There's a great book. Damn, I'm getting old. Uh, senior moment. Um, so so by the end of on World War One, it's really good. Um, so, trying to get your gun? Oh no 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 no. This was a serious <laughs> thing. And I I was amazed when I when I read it. It was it was I, I had a bookstore at the time. One of my customers recommended it to me, and it was it's well known. It's well known. I I'm trying to remember that. I cannot remember the title. It's well worth reading. The stupidity of the you know German and British governments. I mean, and France. They were just killing their people in the trenches. I mean, in the trenches, killing. Yeah, That's it was it. just insane. It was just like this waste. You know, and but people by, became very disillusioned. So by the twenties, was that phase of anarchy over? Was it what, had it died out at, in the twenties? By the by the late twenties, I would say it was pretty much finished again. There's some anarchists here in Detroit that are interesting, very gentle people. I knew them when I was in the poetry scene because some of them were poets. Did you say poetry? Rockers. Poetry. Oh. Poetry. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think I said? Poultry? Poultry? <laughs> no, I, I, I was not, like, you're in all the chicken farmers? I am not a poultry person. <laughs> well, the chicken farmers are coming back trendy. to people's backyards. It is very trendy now. I was about to be impressed. So well, if you don't have a neighbor <laughs> my, who brings in poultry. My, uh, Chickens are anarchists, aren't they? trendy son and his partner have uh, neighbors that have, you know, these are wealthy people that put in... Uh, Chicken, Chickens. chicken coop, and everything, and they they give their Dimitri free range and George chicken. free, you know, like free range eggs every like every like once a week or something. Oh, they're so good, you know. That's true. <laughs> Drop dead. <laughs> <You know? laughs> they have chickens sitting on their fence. This isn't trendy, mom. Just Dad, charming. This is charming. This is like you know, liking poultry or whatever. <laughs>
<laughs> and they live in an area where there are uh, coyotes, so so much for idea. <laughs> yeah, which is really insane in the canyons. Norm has his hand up. Norm, wait a minute. He had his hand up. I'm, an I'm, I'm trying to keep us on the top yeah, we should. for a little longer. They, did, did she ever, did Goldman ever mention circumcision? No. Oh, well, not that I know of. Because you said she was a, worked as a midwife and she might have been around newborns that were circumcised. You know, that's interesting, but I did not find it in that particular book. Um, it would be worth researching. And what did she have to say about Judaism? That, I'm not sure. Being an atheist, she would not like it at all. Uh, well, she, she did have stuff to say about Judaism. I, I'm, oh, she, yeah, she was 16. She comes to the United States. Her parents were Orthodox? Oh, I don't she know if they were Orthodox, but they were... No. She acknowledged that her um, her push for social justice was founded in the Jewish faith. Really? Yes, she acknowledged that and she said it was, but she rejected the religiosity of the Jewish faith. Not that would be surprised. Did she call herself mm -hmm. Jewish? Um, well, I that, think she I called herself Catholic Jewish, guy. but you know, she you remember that these people felt that they were international. international. Citizens of the world. So so. I don't see why she'd call herself Jewish, because that would have put her in a tribe. That would have no, said perhaps she didn't. That's a good question. Tribe. She yeah. was an internationalist. Yeah, she really was. Okay. Well, remember, she rejected uh, a lot of family, although she did keep touch with them in later years, especially her sisters. But her yeah. father used to beat them and right. things. So yeah. she and was, her mother was, uh, yeah, went into crazy. fits of depression and yeah. didn't really... Yeah, so she really yeah. didn't like her family. Was a daughter her like her that? Who would <laughs> yeah. But she did acknowledge her... Um, uh where she got some of her values from. That doesn't was, surprise me either, Anne. Did they try to start any communes, either in Europe or in the U.S.? I think there were communes, but I don't think, other than what she did with her communal things with Berkman and stuff, I don't think so. Well, I mean, any of the anarchists. I mean, because oh, sure that, that would have been a testbed, wouldn't it? Of I'm sure own. they must have. The Americans did several communes, and that'll be in my next talk. Wonderful. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. communes? Yeah. Yay, communes. Those will be fun. Um, yeah. And you said Emma Golden spoke in Detroit. And you yeah, I have her. a lot with, by, with, with communes eventually. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. When, yeah, she spoke in Detroit. Was that at a convention? What was that at? That I don't know. I'm sure it was some rally. So Michigan Atheist. Huh? Michigan, Michigan, Michigan Atheist. Yeah. I rally. don't think so. You think I'm, maybe it could have been a labor? Rally? I'm sure it was a labor thing. But how would that have gone over? Okay, so you have this labor movement that was large, much larger than the anarchist movement yeah. for the eight-hour workday mm -hmm. and so on. So how would, how would that kind of atheism gone over in the, the labor movements? Did, did they try to separate themselves from any accusation of being atheistic? Or I don't think that they were that religious, a lot of the workers, really. They had been brought up, I suppose they kept a traditional religion. But uh, I, I don't think that they cared one way or another, to tell you the truth. Well, Mother Earth had no connection with Mother Jones. I was, no. Yeah, and that's <laughs> no. a defunct that's magazine. No, but right? I, think that they, I think that maybe they used the idea when they did Mother Jones. But wasn't was Mother, Mother Jones, Earth she was a char historical character, I believe, wasn't she? Does somebody want to look up, the nickname. you want to look up Mother Jones? That was a nickname. Um, yeah, it was a nickname yeah. for, was she a labor organizer? Well, she actually, was... what I first want to tell you is that she, her lecture in Detroit was called, it was on, I think around 19, 1897, and it was a split in people's church caused by Emma, Go oh, I'm sorry, that was in her speech, but there's an <laughs> article uh, that says a split in people's church caused by Emma Goldman's lecture. Oh my God. So that's neat. And I think I can call people's it church. Report. That sounds like another ah. kind of socialist type yeah. church, I would think, like Christian socialism. So, but check Mother Jones because I believe that she was a uh, historical figure. It was when you yes, she Mother was Earth, are you talking about the Mother Earth News? No, that no, magazine? no. There is no Mother Earth News. There is. Is there now? Well, I don't know if it's still being published, but it was. No, I heard it was. was back in the land still. of people. That was the yeah, that's different right. than what you're talking about, which is yeah. a magazine called Mother Earth. Earth yeah. mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Which is was finished <laughs> in about seven years. In, so is there any um, analogies that we can draw to the 1960s in terms mm -hmm. of the, the movements there, Good the question. bombings, the riots? 
Well, what happened in Chicago? I think I told you, well, many of us believed that we were going to, like, you know, bring in the brave new world, <laughs> as it were, the, the age of Aquarius. And, mm -hmm. you know, we were very naive and misguided. It, it you know, we and were co-opted from the minute we started, you know. <laughs> and was that, but that, that was going to be a peaceful revolution. Yeah, it was going to be peaceful. That wasn't a, lot be... of it was, a lot of it was violent. There was a lot of violence. Yeah. yeah that's Awful lot of violence. Because, you know, Chicago, Haymarket was in Chicago? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you saw in the 60s at the convention, 1968, was the yeah. the protesters, the Vietnam protesters, were getting beat up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Outside of the political convention, yeah. Yeah. the police barred, got rid of the cameras, and then they beat up the protesters. Well, so the, strike, the students yeah. were accused of being anarchists. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. they were drawn into court, the right. Chicago 7 yeah. or whatever it was. Yeah. And again, an unfair trial. And put on trial. And who were some yeah. of the leaders of that student? Who was the, right. Wasn't he, he was an anarchist in, yeah. in a sense, right? A Jewish. Did, uh, did he yeah, identify so as an anarchist? I don't or even was that just kind of how we. One of them that came out of that was a state uh, a representative. Yeah. House of representative. Yeah. Some of them have become. Yeah. Like, his, you know, uh, I forget his name. Uh, and where, what, uh, was that in Chicago? Where, Tom where something, Tom something. Yeah, what was Tom. Name? Shit. <laughs> and and uh, he married Jane Fonda, or am I thinking somebody different? Uh, he was married to somebody, and I can't remember now, see? Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. it's a different time, but, but I was It was very similar. It was very similar. And, and the difference is as well, because you also had the Black Panthers. Yes. Mm -hmm. they too Another group that was totally right. wiped out. But they were violent. They'd they say, were violent, this but, is the know, also were but they were anarchists, for sure. But they were doing good things in, in the ghetto there, too, you know, so they, again, you have this two-edged sword. But that's the same argument, that's the same strategy, I should say, as Tammany Hall, as, yeah. any, as anything yeah. over in the Middle East right yeah. now. Yeah, or or ISIS. The I mean, it's yeah, doing the it's same the same for some cities, yeah. It's an effective, it's, it goes yeah. back to the strategy of keep their yeah. bellies sure. full. and their, true. Yeah. And, uh, but, so do you think we'll have another period? Of oh yeah, RPG we're bound to. US? I don't know about another we're period. We're bound to. We're bound to. I, the pendulum always swings. Possibly, but I don't. I think what I would argue is that I don't think anarchy has ever gone away. It's just popping up in different causes versus that's a it, whole that's what it's movement always yeah. instead of a pendulum. giant movement. But that's the, that's no, you just described anarchism. anarchy as a movement in and of itself. Not really. No, no, I, I said several times, you know, that it, it's a heartbeat almost, like Muriel Sparks said about it. There isn't even a real history. It pops up, it's repressed, it and goes it down. goes down. And then it comes back up again. So it's always with us. You know, Unlike, like, say, socialism or communism where you have the identifier. Well, my goodness, people. although I don't think he's really much of a socialist, you can see that Bernie Sanders is making a, somewhat of a splash. I don't think it's going to last. No. And how, how much of a socialist he is, I'm not sure. Some of his sure. congressional <laughs> record is starting now, to be questioned. Now, now, now. It is. want to attack him because he's gaming. But he's not life. an anarchist, so we can't talk about him. Can't Why would I want to attack him? <laughs> Because you're favoring Hillary. Well, I favor Hillary because I think that she's the only one that can probably win, she or Biden. I don't want Sanders to, like, break the, the, the thing up. I don't, I'm don't. i not in love with Hillary, but I think she can do the job. How, right. do, you, how do we know that uh, Are we done with the Trump anarchist a, discussion? We, we, know know on a whole. we could shut the... <laughs> no, I just <laughs> shut the can. want to close the, the period of the okay. 60s. I mean, what was different about the 60s that was present in the 20s or the teens. I think we were somewhat less violent. I mean, but there well, no, was violence. I think it's the same. First of all, yeah. what was present is, I mean, it was huge because of the Civil Rights Act. I mean, it was just basically come to a time where people like, I'm not going to take this anymore yeah. as yeah. a mass, yeah. en masse, so to yeah. speak. And, you know, Occupy Wall Street could have been that. But, but it, it wasn't. wasn't. You notice it petered out. And, and, well, it wasn't even en masse because too many people... We were, we were in love with, with the idea of freedom. We were in love with bringing in cooperation and, you know... Uh, I don't know what you were in love with in the 60s. I thought it was more of a rebellion against the 50s. It really... Well, that was part of it, too, of course. But, no, I think we had, we had a rigidity. lot of ideals. We were really, we were really naive. That's the only way I can describe it. I, when I look back on it, I think, how could we have believed that we would ever be able to do anything like that? Mm -hmm. To yeah, influence. Like what? Influence. I still don't know what it, I know what they fought right, in the I know of Aquarius, the just like the anarchists. What thought. did you exactly want to do? Love, you know, end people. war. You were going to end the war. Yeah, we were going to end, end the war. war. We were going to end oppressive government. We were going to like. Civil you rights. and Bush. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Civil rights is tied <laughs> Well, to you know, I mean, we we were very naive and misguided, you know. Mm -hmm. But it, we were, it was So you huge. took the momentum of some of the positive change, like the civil rights movement, and absolutely. thought, if we could just run with this, we absolutely. can change everything everywhere. That, absolutely. We thought we could do it. Yeah. Yeah. So, can I? Yeah. I got a couple of things I'd like to just still kind of in this whole anarchy concept. I, first of all, I had the audacity to rewrite their slogan, where there is authority, <laughs> there is no freedom. I hate those absolute statements. Like, where there is authority, freedom is limited. Oh, come oh, on. Oh, <laughs> they would love 